My name is Pat Murphy. I'm a filmmaker and I'm the director of a documentary called Psychedelia, the history and science of mystical experience. As part of the distribution plan for this film, I worked with a number of organizations in the psychedelic space to host screenings followed by panel discussions. One of the groups I worked with was a holistic health center in Canada called the Welling Center. And we were super lucky to get uh, two phenomenal guests, Dr. Pamela Crisco, a psychologist and psychedelic researcher from Canada, as well as world-renowned mycologist, Paul Stamets. We decided to make the first part of this discussion available for free here on YouTube. In it, we talk about the making of the documentary. We talk about the use of psychedelics to treat mental health conditions like addiction, depression, anxiety, uh, PTSD. And we also hear from Paul Stamets about how he first got interested in psilocybin mushrooms. So thanks so much. Hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the Q&A, everybody. I am your host, Brian Welling, a psychologist and psychedelic integration practitioner from the Welling Center here in Edmonton, um, where it just finished snowing recently. Um, I am also the director of Psycha Misty, the Society for uh, Psychedelic, Mystical, and Transpersonal Experience. And you can find uh, more about us at uh, wellingcenter.com. We are also brought to you today by the Canadian Psychedelic Association. In watching the film, you learned about some of the amazing potential of psychedelics to help heal this world. And if you were inspired by that and want to see our society transformed by it, then I strongly recommend that you donate or become a member of the Canadian Psychedelic Association we will learn more about the psychedelic, uh, the Canadian Psychedelic Association in a little while, because one of our panelists today just happens to be a founding member of that association. And I'm going to introduce you to her and our other two panelists right now. We are very honored to have them with us. Pamela Crisco. Dr. Pamela Crisco is a medical doctor with a strong interest in chronic pain mental health, and psychedelic medicine. She is a clinical instructor at the University of British Columbia and an adjunct professor at Vancouver Island University. As I mentioned, she is one of the founding board members of the Canadian Psychedelic Association. Dr. Crisco is actively involved in research related to psilocybin, MDMA, ketamine, COVID mental wellness, uh, and neurogenesis. She is co-investigator on uh, the largest microdosing, one of the largest microdosing studies, microdose.me, um, .me, which is uh, ongoing with 12,000 plus enrolled participants. She is also the medical lead on the Roots to Thrive ketamine assisted therapy program that treats healthcare practitioners and first responders that themselves have PTSD, depression, anxiety, and addiction. Welcome, Pamela. We also have with us today, Paul Stamets. He is a speaker, author, mycologist, medical researcher, and entrepreneur. Paul Stamets is considered an intellectual and industry leader in fungi, habitat, medicinal use, and production. He lectures extensively to deepen the understanding and respect for the organisms that literally exist under every footstep taken on this path of life. His presentations cover a range of mushroom species and research showing how mushrooms can help the health of people and the planet. He is the author of six books, including Mycelium Running, How Mushrooms Can Help Save the World, Growing Gourmet and Medicinal Mushrooms, and psilocybin mushrooms of the world. He has discovered and named numerous new species of psilocybin mushrooms. You may have heard of him because he was prominently featured in the film Fantastic Fungi, or maybe you've been watching the new Star Trek series, Star Trek Discovery, where uh, 
crew member and astromycologist based on our guest also bears his name. Welcome, Paul Stamets. Thank and you. finally, we have joining us the maker of the wonderful film you just viewed, Pat Murphy. Pat Murphy is a documentary filmmaker and professional film editor who gravitates toward historical and biographical storytelling. His work as an editor has been featured on the national networks of PBS and Showtime, as well as major news brands like People Magazine. As an independent producer, his films have been shown in museums, international film festivals, and in studio on Channel 13 in New York City. Welcome, Pat. So Pat, I wanna start with, uh, with you. Um, can you tell us the story of how this film came to be made? Yes, um, so believe it or not, I started making uh, this film about nine years ago. And I was a, a student at NYU Film School and I was looking for like a senior project for my senior film. And I'd, I'd been interested in psychedelics at the time. And um, I was at a party and I overheard somebody talking about this study that was going on at the NYU School of Medicine using psilocybin uh, with people with cancer who were suffering from end of life anxiety. Um, and that immediately piqued my interest because the idea of using psychedelics in a sort of FDA, DEA controlled uh, setting and by MDs and PhDs um, was like a very new concept to me. So that sort of immediately piqued my interest. And then I started doing research and I learned about the fact that, you know, before the counterculture of the 60s, LSD was used by psychiatrists in the 50s and 60s and was sort of considered a breakthrough discovery in the field at the time. So I felt like that history wasn't really known by the average person. And I, and I sort of felt like it hadn't really been told in a sort of documentary format, uh, especially at the time, this was like nine years ago. And so that was kind of the beginning of the idea. Um, so it started as a student project and then it just kind of never finished. It just had this way of like continuing over the years. So I uh, finished a version in about 2015, 2016 and showed it at film festivals. Um, and it got a good reaction, but then it, it never really got widely released. Um, and then I sort of forgot about it for a couple of years. And then during that time, Michael Pollan's book, How to Change Your Mind came out. And also the NYU study, which was in the film was finally published. And suddenly there was like this explosion of interest in psychedelics and people were coming to me and being like, hey, did you know when we were at NYU, the NYU School of Medicine was like studying psilocybin. I was like, yes, I, I do know about fact, that. I did actually. know that, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, geez. And I was reading art, people were sending me articles about this stuff. And I was like, I really need to get this film out here, you know, out into the world. So uh, I did a new version starting about a year, a year or two ago. And I uh, incorporated Rick Doblin and some other uh, interview subjects and some new archival material. And then I put together kind of this new version and um, I said, you know, this, this time I'm going to kind of work directly with organizations, um, you know, like yours, like CPA, to kind of share this film directly with audiences. Um, so, so, that was, so it started as a student project about nine years ago. And if you told me I'd be sharing it, you know, nine years later, I wouldn't believe you, but that, that's how long it took. Wow. Well, you did a fantastic job concisely putting together the history of the the whole movement and and of psychedelics and mystical experience um i was i was really impressed by how you were able to to put that all together and and tell it in um uh, a, such a a concise but also meaningful way so i really appreciate that thank thank you i think you've done a, a fantastic service um so I want to turn things over to Pamela for a minute here because a lot has happened in the psychedelic in psychedelic research since this film was first made. And I'm wondering, Pamela, if if you can bring us up to speed on what's been going on since about 2015 um, in in this field and and how you got involved and maybe tell us a little bit about your work. Thanks, Brian. And uh, Pat, the film's phenomenal. Really, really enjoyed it. I've seen it twice now, today the second time. And 
a lot of stuff there that I didn't know about. So thank you for capturing that. So Thanks. psychedelic therapies, oh yeah, my pleasure. Um, it, they've come a long ways. You know, when I first heard about the John Hopkins trials going on, that was interesting and exciting, but one never realized that, I didn't realize that it would accelerate so much. So as many of you know, the MDMA MAPS um, trials for PTSD are going and they're getting phenomenal results. Phase three in process, both in Canada and the US. Um, we're seeing, I think, at least 45 different institutions that have something going on with psilocybin right now. So we're seeing that in um, opioid use disorders, addi other addictions, eating disorders, depression, anxiety. Um, we ourselves are involved in protocols uh, um, in development around uh, traumatic brain injury, Alzheimer's, uh, possibly Parkinson disease coming up, PTSD. So there's a lot of movement going forward, both in, U in the US and Canada. Um, in the UK, there's especially a lot of LSD research going on, and of course in North America as well, but with Beckley Foundation in Europe. Um, there's a number of groups that are bringing 5-MeO DMT in trials that are going on. So what we're really seeing is an acceleration of the scientific interest coming back online after this kind of error of time of the war on drugs that shut everything down for 40 years. And so the scientists and the, and the medical community, of course, the underground community has never stopped, is really all coming together. We're starting to see a, a coalescing of uh, curious minds and people going, you know, we have better tools. And now that we're getting beyond, like I said, this era of the war on drugs, we're starting to see a real explosion of, of scientific interest coming forward. So it's pretty exciting. I've, I'm sure I've missed a few of the, the substances that are in uh, research. And my interest in it is because I, I work in chronic pain and, you know, 50% of chronic pain is physical and 50% of chronic pain can be related to other things, existential crisis, depression, anxiety, um, difficult life, addiction, you know, challenging work situations, ch challenging family situations. And so it just, it's blatantly obvious that if we can get out of our own way, if we can use other tools that can help us get out of our stuckness or our rigidity or our trauma or um, whatever, that if we can use these tools in conjunction in medicine and in, in wellness, then we're gonna see everybody just do a lot better. And especially my chronic pain patients. And I can only do so much with physical modalities. And we really do need to recognize that we need to in a very um, healthy way, you know, take care of the whole person, the mental wellness, the spiritual wellness and the physical wellness. So. I think myself and a lot of other MDs and clearly another, a lot of therapists are really interested and really excited that we can finally bring these modalities back into healthcare and, and well care. Mm -hmm. You, you mentioned chronic pain and I have a quote for, for you from the film. Um, the worst pain and the worst fear and the worst anxiety turned into something that has opened which is the most precious thing that I have ever known. It was a sense of connectedness that runs through all of us that I never knew. I thought that was a really beautiful moment in, in the film. Um, so maybe I can turn things over to uh, Paul for a moment. Um, psychedelic mushrooms and fungi as a whole are nothing new for you. Can you tell us a bit about your history in this realm and what it means for you to have so much new attention now focused on this area? <laughs> this has been a long journey. So thank you very much for inviting me to weigh in. I got into basically psychedelics when I was about 14 years of age when my brother John uh, went to Yale and came back with a book called Altered States of Consciousness by Charles Tart which I, you know, immersed myself into. Um, and that really got me excited. He went to Mexico and to Colombia, ingested magic mushrooms, came back with these fabulous stories and being the youngest one in my family. And, and I adored my older brother, John. I, I was greatly enthused and, and he, to his consternation, maybe a little bit overexcited about the subject. <laughs> uh -huh. But um, we became fast buddies and uh, tripping partners for many years. And uh, 
my brother John uh, passed away a few years ago, regrettably, but he was a huge influence in my life. So I was up in, um, I was a logger hippie up in the Cascade, setting chokers. Three guys in my crew got killed. I decided to go back to college. So, and I went, I went to the Evergreen State College because I was fascinated with scanning electron microscopy. I was self-taught in taxonomy of mushrooms, spent an enormous number of hours in the library at the University of Washington Science Library, looking for anything on psilocybin mushrooms. Many of you, I'm sure, have experienced this. You'd go into the libraries in those days, and everything on psilocybin mushrooms had been razored out uh, of the books. And so uh, Dr. Daniel Stuntz invited me at the University of Washington but, um, Botany Department, um, even though mycology does not, should not be in botany, um, to his personal library. He took me under his wing. So I started writing taxonomic keys to psilocybin mushrooms and everyone was going to Mexico in the you know, 60s and 70s and then we started discovering they were growing all around us and basically it was the it was the new practice of using wood chips as beauty bark um, and these mycologists said many of them have never seen a psilocybin mushroom studying um, mushrooms through all their lives and suddenly all these students on campus were bringing in these magic mushrooms so they kind of leapt, leapt literally out of the landscape they were invisible in our, in our forests. And they're probably our endophytes growing inside of trees and only when the trees are, are chipped. Now there are field psilocybes um, and there's wood chip psilocybes, so big, two big divisions. But the wood chip psilocybes really became prominently ob obvious on campuses since they, the widespread practice is using beauty bark. Thank you, Weyerhaeuser Corporation. <laughs> We're spreading psilocybin mushroom spores all over the Northwest. Um, and then, so I started writing uh, taxonomic keys. I wrote my first book when I was 19 or 20, um, published uh, four new species, maybe five now on the genus Psilocybe. Um, and my work was covered by a DEA license at the Evergreen State College and did, grew lots and lots of psilocybin mushrooms, um, which were all legally, and grown and I adopted the policy nature provides, I don't. I say that for really important reasons. Um, these are life-changing uh, uh, spiritual substances and um, I'm not a therapist and I don't want to inherit the karma of somebody having a bad trip. It's not, you know, I'm a taxonomist, I'm a cultivator, I'm a scientist, I'm not a therapist. And so because I had a DEA license, I thought every other person approaching me was a DEA undercover agent. <laughs> so my paranoia was pretty high. Um, and also I had to strictly conform to, you know, to protect our license, I had to make sure that I behaved. So it was an extraordinary time. Then we proceeded to do over 20 years of psychoactive mushroom conferences. Um, many, some of you may have heard about the Mycomedia conferences and then our great end of the millennium conference in 1999. I, I, know, I know that knew Ken Kesey and the very pranksters. I'm tight with the family and the Grateful Dead. And I knew uh, 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 Sasha Shulgin and a lot of the scientists. And I realized that I was the nexus, the, the Venn intersection between the, the cultural the psychedelic heroes of our and, and the scientists. So I thought this is perfect, I'll bring them together. So in, in Halloween, on. Uh, October 31st, 1999, we had this amazing mushroom conference with Sasha Shulgin, Andy Weil, you know, Ken Kesey, you know, a bunch of the pranksters all came together for an extraordinary uh, weekend that goes down in the annals of history as being one of the most extraordinary events. If you'd like to watch the entire discussion, which is about an hour long, uh, you can do so on Vimeo On Demand. I'll put a link in the description below for that. Otherwise, I'd love if you could hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and let me know what you think in the comments. I'd really love to hear it. Thanks so much.